good evening, good morning, whatever it might be. So I titled this, Be Available and Ready. And I want to explain why. I feel like in life, at times, we have life-altering life-altering situations happen in our life and I wanted to get on here I normally don't get on at 3 30 in the morning but I'm getting on at 3 30 in the morning because of of what just happened to me I feel like there's times in our lives there's life-altering things that happen and this this morning this evening however you want to look at it I feel like that's happened to me and I want you to stay with me through this video because my I'm all up in my emotions right now. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna go through the scenario with you so you understand what God does. So I'm gonna go quickly if I can. So I get a call three o'clock in the morning for a tire change. That's nothing unusual. I'm frustrated and aggravated. I I've been out most of the night. I just I got about forty five minutes of sleep, so I was frustrated. I look at the call, it's south of me, about fifteen miles. Uh, and in the notes, it says the guy don't know where he's at. Exactly. Three o'clock in the morning, somebody don't know where they're at, they're usually drunk. Let's just get honest with you. That's that's usually what happens. So I get on the road, and I call the guy, and he tells me he's on one highway. And I get I get to that part of the highway, and, and, and he didn't sound drunk. He sounded like a young man. He's got a new car. So I know he's got a jack, and I know he's got a tire, so I'm already frustrated. I'm just I'm just, just walking through my feelings here. <clears throat> and uh, he wasn't on that highway. He was he was eight-tenths of a mile from 55, but he wasn't on that highway. He was on another highway. He's about 10 miles further. So when I called him, I, when I was talking to him, I said, Sir, you understand it's going to cost you X amount of dollars because you're further away. I was frustrated. I aggravated. Couldn't understand what why, why this kid couldn't change his own tire, why I had to get out of bed. Stay there, watch this. So I get to him, I find him, I get turned around. He's a little, he's a little skittish, you know, because I pass him and I go way past him to get turned around. I'm in my big truck, and uh, or my Kenworth, and uh, he called me. He's like, "Sir, you just passed me." I said, "Son, I got to turn around. I got to find a place to turn around." And you're kind of, so I get there. He's on a hill. He's on a curve. He's on a two lane road. There's no shoulder. It's a dangerous spot. So now I'm even more frustrated. So I get out, I get all my equipment out, and he's set, set, standing outside the car, young, he's a young kid, he's a kid, 20-something, and uh, I could tell that he was distraught, I could tell that he'd been crying, I didn't know if it was over the tire change or not, it's none of my business, right, that's mean, but I could tell, <clears throat> so I got in his car to pull his emergency brake because we was on that hill and on a curve and I was fixing Jackie's car up. And when I, when I did that, I, I noticed, I noticed a pistol in his front seat. It was on top of a hoodie. I didn't think nothing of it. You're on a back road, you know, you're scared. I get it. So I get changing his tire and I get doing what I always do, ask a few questions. Son, what are you doing out here this late night not knowing where you are? He said, I had to go, he said, I said, where are you from? He said, Chesterfield. Okay. If you don't know that, that's where, where we was from, folks, that's about an hour and a half drive. I said, son, what are you doing all the way out here at Chesterfield? from Chesterfield, driving around two o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning in a brand new car that shouldn't have had a flat. He said, I was just driving around trying to clear my head. I knew then what I was dealing with. I knew that moment. I felt it in my spirit that I was dealing with a suicidal person. The God who woke me up and chose me to go change this boy's tire. That I might have a talk with this young man on the side of the road. 
and get the chance to pray with him. Let me explain something to you. We had a phenomenal conversation. I literally knelt down on my knee and prayed with this boy. Right there on the side of, side of this highway. At that moment, I didn't care. I knew what I was doing. I wasn't changing a tire. God had put me in this boy's life. I said, son, I know what you're doing. He said, you do? I said, yeah, you wasn't trying to clear your head, son. You was looking for a place, wasn't you? He said, yes, sir, I was. But I just couldn't do it. I said, son, I, I, need, I need you to be honest with me. I need to know your mama's phone number. And I need that gun out of that truck, out of that car. I don't want to take your gun, son. I want to take your bullets. Can I do that? He said, yes, sir, you can. That's what I did. I called this boy's mama. And I talked to her. She was crying because she was worried about him. She was home praying. I said, ma'am, I know about a praying mama. I got one. I said, son, I talked to his mom a little bit. I told her, I said, here, I want you to talk to your boy. That boy cried harder than he'd ever cried in his lifetime. Right here, I believe it. I believe it in my heart. And they hung up, and I looked at him. I said, son, I don't, and I, I did my, I just talked what God told me to say. And I prayed with him again. And I sent him on his way. I got my truck and I cried because I complained and I griped about getting out of bed to go change a tire at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is what I know. You have to be available and you have to be ready for God to use you at any moment. If you're watching this video, and you've had those thoughts. I've been there. I've done that. Literally. If it wasn't for my boy that's watching right now, I wouldn't be here today. It was a God encounter that, that, that evening when my son walked back in that house. And, he, and something had prompted him. And he come in and he cut me down. From hanging in my closet. I know what it's like to want to take your life. And I know what this, I, I've been I've been around the families of people that's taken their life. And all it does, young man and young lady, is, is, is transfer your pain that you got to pain to somebody else, to your family members. All the pain that, you, that you're dealing with, all the things that you're going through, all that does is, is, is it leaves an empty, Void because they don't understand why, and it transfers that pain that you're in into every single family member you have and every friend that you have. If you are thinking of taking your life or harming yourself, reach out for help professional help, not just anybody. Professional help, get yourself some help tonight. This morning, however you want to look at it, because I was in bed tonight, I was available. Be available. No matter how uncomfortable it makes you, no, how, no matter how inconvenient it, it, it is, you never know where God is leading you to that use you. And be aware 
of your surroundings and be and be mindful then let God speak to you and let God bring bring knowledge to you because if you don't you just you'll pass right by it and you won't see it be available and ready for God to use you I got to get up in a few hours if I even go to bed at this point to preach to some of the greatest people that I pastor that, that I'm just I'm just honored to pastor these people I'm honored to to be their preacher I'm honored to bring them the word but I'm honored that God used me tonight we're going to call him Jay just his initial J. Pray for Jay. Pray for Jay's mama. God moved tonight through prayer. Keep praying, folks, for your family members. God will change it, I promise.